Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. So today I want to talk to you guys about a ship that I think almost every commander would want in their arsenal, and that's an interdictor. Now, an interdictor can generate a gravity field which mimics a planet or a moon, and it's capable of pulling ships out of hyperspace, and at the same time, it's able to prevent ships from going into hyperspace. It's really the perfect weapon for a numerically superior force chasing a highly mobile guerrilla fleet like the Rebellion. Although interdictor ships have never really appeared in the main franchise movies, they have appeared in Legends, and more recently, the technology was canonized in the Tarkin and Heir to the Jedi novels, and it also played a central role in a few Rebel episodes, including the Season 3 finale. It's unknown how the Imperials developed this technology, but what is known is that this technology has been around in the galaxy for thousands of years. The earliest sign of this technology can be found in massive installations that were left around the galaxy by an unknown ancient alien race. One of these installations was Center Point Station in the Carillion system. It was capable of generating a field large enough to cover the entire system, and it prevented any inbound or outbound traffic. Scientists theorized that these giant installations were once used to move planets and even stars around to create artificial solar systems. Earliest use of this technology by the Republic dates back to during the Mandalorian Wars. The Leviathan was the pinnacle of interdiction technology at the time. The Hapes Consortium also utilized this technology in its battle dragons, which were equipped with pulse mass mines which could be launched to create an interdiction field. The Yuzhang Vong had their own organic version of the Interdictor, which used multifunctional gravity projection Dobbin Basils. And the Chiss, thanks to Thrawn, were able to get their hands on a crude version of a gravity well projector from the nomadic species called the Vagari. Thrawn would later be exiled from the Chiss and entered the service of the Galactic Empire. It is possible that Thrawn is the one who introduces this new technology to the Empire. Since the Rusan Reformation, the Republic, which later turned into the Galactic Empire, had lost knowledge of many older military technologies. The first interdictors created by the Empire were used to control traffic coming in and out of the deep core security zone around Coruscant and other important Imperial worlds. Five years after the proclamation of the New Order, the Empire had three interdictor vessels. The first one created was the Detainer, a CC-2200 interdictor cruiser. Then there was an updated version, which was known as the CC-7700 interdictor frigate. And finally, the Immobilizer 418 cruiser, which resembled an Imperial class Star Destroyer in shape, but was actually much smaller. All three types of these ships were present in the Abroa Sky system during an operation under the command of Governor Tarkin. He was trying to intercept his personal ship, the Carrion Spike, which had been taken over by terrorists. The interdictors were used to block one of the major hyperspace lanes that went into the system. The 418 immobilizer was fresh from the Imperial shipyards and had immense gravity well projectors that had yet to be used in the field. Due to the crowded nature of the hyperspace lane they were positioned to intercept, when the weapon was engaged, several civilian ships were pulled out of hyperspace. The immobilizer's overcurrent resistors failed to govern the cruiser's gravity well projection system, and the gravity well became too strong and started pulling all nearby ships towards it. In the chaos that followed, a Mon Calamari luxury liner with more than 10,000 travelers aboard was pulled from hyperspace and collided with the detainer interdictor cruiser. The blockade had failed. A decade later, Commander Sato and Ezra Bridger were sent to investigate the disappearance of one of their patrols in the Del Zenus system. While en route, their CR-90 Corvette was pulled out of hyperspace by an unknown ship. However, they managed to send out a distress beacon to Ghost Crew. Sabian Wren informs the team that she had heard the Empire was developing gravity well projecting cruisers and theorized that their friends had been pulled out by such a cruiser. According to Imperial Protocol, new technology was usually tested in remote areas of the galaxy before being fully deployed. Meanwhile, on the interdictor, Bridger and the rebel droid Chopper attempt to sabotage the gravity well projector, which apparently has its own reactor. So we can assume that the energy consumption of this weapon is just massive. As the rebels attempt to flee, the interdictor once again pulls the corvette out of hyperspace, but Chopper had tampered with the reactor's overcurrent resistors, causing the gravity well once again to become unstable, and started pulling in nearby friendly Imperial light destroyers. Eventually, these ships collide and destroy the interdictor. 
The ship in this episode fits the description of the immobilizer interdictor found in the Tarkin novel, although I'm not sure why this ship is in late stage R&D for more than 10 years. It could be that this is a very complicated project and there are a lot of problems with the design, or it's possible that this is a Mark II version of that ship. And the third possibility is that there are just some writing inconsistencies. I'm starting to believe that that's probably most likely the case. Thrawn would go on to use a pair of interdictor cruisers to trap a rebel fleet on Chopper base in the Rebels season 3 finale. Which by the way features some large scale space battles, so if that's your thing, you should definitely check it out. Despite its earlier failures, the Immobilizer would become an integral part of the Galactic Empire's naval strategy. After the Battle of Yavin, Luke Skywalker aboard the Desert Jewel would go toe to toe with an Immobilizer class interdictor cruiser. By then, the Rebels had already developed training that would help their pilots get away from these interdictor cruisers. The key was taking down one of the ship's 12 generators and destroying the gravity well generators. The biggest weakness of an interdictor was that it had mild defense capabilities with only a contingent of 24 TIE fighters. It relied on escort ships for its main defense. Even so, the immobilizer was an upgrade from the interdictor cruisers and frigates used before it. Their main purpose had been to patrol civilian hyperspace lanes. The Empire soon realized that in actual battle between capital ships, an interdictor ship became a very tempting target. So they began phasing out the immobilizer cruiser by putting gravity well projectors inside of star destroyers. The interdictor cruiser was a brilliant way for the Empire to combat the increasingly elusive Rebel Alliance. Had they been utilized earlier in the Rebellion, it could have been used for the Empire to trap key members of the Alliance before it was able to grow into a full-on Rebellion. In the right hands, the interdictor could become a very useful force multiplier, and in Thrawn's hand it literally became that. He often used this technology to pull his own ships out of hyperspace. This would allow him to rapidly deploy reinforcements and surprise the enemy with precision micro jumps. So guys, that's the canon history of the Interdictor Vessel. Now, I was really happy to see it appear once again in Rebels because I think this is a very important ship and we'll definitely see it again because its unique capability really gives us some interesting battle scenarios. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification button uh, so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And as usual, if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.